I've written a letter to Daddy. His address is heaven above. <laughs> oh, hello, baby girl. Mickey and I sent to say hello to all of you from Castle Goring. And without further ado, since we have quite a lot of ground to cover today, I am going to plunge right in, if I may. Andrea Sardinia says, Lady C, do you have any insight into why the Queen's doctors made her cancel her trip to Northern Ireland? Do you think her worries over her troublesome grandson, granddaughter-in-law and Prince Andrew might be affecting her health? Very good question. Yes, the Queen had to cancel her trip to Northern Ireland, but she has had a full list of engagements that would tire out a 40-year-old, much less a 95-year-old. The Queen has the constitution of an ox, but she is a human being. She also is somebody who is, you only need to look at her to see that she's somebody who's very committed, but very spirited as well as spiritual. You know, those dancing eyes are indicative of something going on beneath the surface. And they are a connectedness to life and a connectedness to profound principles and deep-seated values, which mean that as she goes about her everyday life, she is engaging on a very real level. That is very energizing, but it also tires you out. You can't do it constantly. And she has a fuller, list of engagements than many people literally half her age. That is a fact that needs to be considered. Everybody needs a break occasionally, even those who, as I say, have constitutions of oxes. Because by being a real, the queen as anybody else who's real, you are open to life, but you're also open to this arrows and to the downside and to the negativity that's happening around you. And let's face facts. Fascinating though her life is, and committed though she is to her role as head of state, the fact of the matter is she has stuff going on in her personal life, which is very difficult to cope with. Remember, she has just lost her husband of 70 something years. She's still grieving. Added to that is the difficulties with Prince Andrew, which are very concerning, notwithstanding the fact that there is the belief that Prince Andrew is being victimized in a cooked up scenario, partly for financial gain and partly for political exploitation. Nevertheless, it is worrying, although there is quiet confidence that justice will prevail and that the mischief that the cooks have had in store as they have been cooking up their brief of trying to make out that somebody should be guilty of something that there's no proof that he's guilty of 
because of association when other people who were far closer associates are not being suspected of anything untoward. And I'm now referring to Bill Clinton. There is quiet confidence that at the end of the day, justice will prevail and that Prince Andrew will be absolved. Nevertheless, it's a very worrying time and it is a very, very unfortunate situation for anybody to be in and for any loving mother to have to be coping with. Then there is the even more troubling business of Harry and Meghan. You only need to put yourself in the shoes of any loving grandmother to see how you would feel if your beloved grandson had gone rogue, was in bed literally as well as metaphorically with people who were determined to detract from the institution you have spent your whole life dedicated to. The damage that was feared that Harry and Meghan would be able to wreak has actually turned out to be less of a threat than was initially thought. Harry and Meghan have worked themselves into the situation where with every passing day it is likely that they will either fall entirely flat on their faces or come up with a new and more acceptable act. No longer the victims of a cruel and terrible royal world at the very moment that they're I'm royal, you've got to respect the fact I'm royal, I'm going to use everything about royalty to make myself a whole shed load of bucks. There is the hope that Harry and Meghan will actually start to do what they should have been doing from the very outset which was behave with dignity because you see it is in their financial interest and they're beginning to realize it to not be treacherous and to not play the poor me i've been so put upon and to not play the oh my goodness now what version of the truth did i give three minutes ago Actually, no, I'm going to give another version of the truth. I don't care that it contradicts with that word. No, no, no. This is my latest version of the truth. And you all got to believe it. Yeah, you've got to believe it. Because it's my version of the truth. And if I say so, it is. Because, of course, they have behaved like two spoilt brats. Infantile creatures. Middle-aged. But the hope is that they are in a transitional phase whereby they will become more acceptable, generally speaking. Let us see what happens. And yes, of course, it's had an effect upon the Queen's health. It's had an effect upon everybody's health. Or, as Harry and Meghan would put it, their mental health. You know, people don't go through traumas and just slough it off like they're narcissists. Only narcissists slough things off because, like snakes, they come up with a new skin and shed the old one. And the old skin no longer counts. The Queen isn't a narcissist. Of course she's been affected. But the main 
problem is too much work, too intensively, and she gives 110% to everything she does. That degree of intensity and earnestness means that every now and then you need to retreat and recharge your batteries, whether you are 25, 45, 65 or 95. Alison Webb says, does this mean Earthshot will be handed to Harry after the announcement that it is going to the US next year? Not a chance, sweetie pie, not a chance. Harry and Meghan will have absolutely nothing to do with Earthshot. William learned his lesson when they discovered that Meghan and Harry were trying to hijack their joint charity to do things that were unacceptable and also that Meghan was not behaving in a way that they regarded as desirable or acceptable. There is no possibility, I am reliably informed, of Harry and Meghan being involved in Earthshot. It is William and Catherine's project. William is the king in waiting. Catherine is the queen in waiting. Meghan and Harry are the marchers in waiting. Nobody is going to poison that pond by opening up the sluice gates and letting in that level of pollution in a project which is sterling. Also, as we have seen from the way it functions, it's sound and solid. It's not pretentious piffle. I don't think Meghan and Harry are capable of doing anything that isn't pretentious piffle. M. Corbett says, can Her Majesty put the titles into abeyance at her pleasure? The Her Majesty can put her, any title of Harry's into abeyance except the peerage. She can strip Harry of his princely rank like that. What she cannot do is stripping of the peerage. That has to be done via an act of parliament. However, Harry can ask for his titles to be put into abeyance. And they can be. So if it's forced upon him and he digs his heels in, he would remain the Duke of Sussex. She can strip his Royal Highness, she can strip his princely rank, but she can't strip the title Duke of Sussex. Of course, if she stripped his Royal rank and made it clear that it was stripped against his wishes, that would go some way towards reducing the prestige that the title Duke of Sussex has. Because people would then know that the family actively disapproves of their conduct at the moment because they have gently dealt with the matter of effectively putting Harry's Royal Highness title into abeyance. There's not sufficient clarity for people to actually appreciate the significance of what was done. People don't get it. I get it. The aristocracy gets it. Royalists get it if they're knowledgeable about the way things are done. But even a lot of upper-class people don't get it because 
the ins and outs of titles are not so readily understood for people to actually know when. It's a huge deal to prevent somebody from using his Royal Highness because he's actually been effectively stripped of his Royal rank. Except it's not done permanently and it's not done officially, but it's done semi-permanently and it's done as a demand, let's put it that way. So it's actually almost well confusing for the public. But it's not confusing for people like me because we know what's been done and we know the enormity of what's been done. But the public doesn't know it. And the public are under a misapprehension as a result. Lynn Baldwin says, Dear Lady C, love your program. Uh, thank you. I enjoy history and have learned a great deal since listening to you. Wonderful. With regards to the sketchy Sussexes and their deal with Netflix, who has the final say on the finished edited product? Brilliant question. I'll continue with it. Given all of the ridiculous footage from their recent Save the World New York City tour, could Netflix turn this footage into a mockumentary <laughs> showing them for the fools that they really are? How exciting can watching Megan in her droopy outfits hand out two boxes of vegetables to two ch school children be? They already played their hand and spilt all the beans on the royal family to Oprah. They've been gone for nearly two years. They have nothing current on the royal family. Brilliant point there. Plus the tabloids have been writing trash about them for years. Can this be said that it is yesterday's news? But an upstart Johnny can lately Duchess and her ditzy duke throwing it all away to create a new royal family in a republic. Preposterous, no? Now, that could be entertaining. What do you think? <laughs> I love it. I have to tell you, it's not past the realms of possibility. I think it's less likely in America than it would be here. In England, I should really say in Britain, I'm very old fashioned and old fashioned people say England when they mean Britain. In Britain, there is a tradition of really poking uh, everybody. So, it's never possible to do a totally adulatory program on someone. And certainly people as controversial as Harry and Meghan, they would be sent up royally by any company that didn't care about working with them again. This is the rub. Netflix will have the final say. The final say on the edited footage, usually, in fact, almost invariably, reposes with the producers. It does not repose with the stars of the show. And although Harry and Meghan might be partly producing. If Netflix decides that it needs to have an it needs to introduce an element of reality and introduce teeth into the pap, we might well see 
something that is tantamount to a mockumentary. Another way that you can get a mockumentary is to go straight with all of their pretensions and act as if they're fact. That's what I would do if I were in Netflix's place. Because it's not possible to mock Harry and Meghan by praising them enough. If you praise them, if you would say to them, you are the most wonderful things, you actually make all the profits from the past seem so ignorant. They'll be, yeah, yeah, it's really true. Yeah, yeah, it's really true. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, tell me more. And Megs would be saying, oh, H, I think they just denigrated me because, you know, they haven't said I'm a goddess. And they would say, Megs, they did hint that you're a demigoddess. Well, that's not good enough for me, H. Come on, you know. So they can ratchet up their significance to such preposterous levels and if netflix goes with it it will be the most brilliant mockumentary because to an extent oprah did that and look at the revilement they all came in for i don't think oprah did it deliberately but if it were done deliberately, it would be brilliant entertainment. Because really, we can all see that the emperor and empress have no new clothes. While they are going around completely denuded and pretending that they have cloth of diamonds. Joy. Sleegman says, Dear Lady C, there's much discussion about the timing of the release of H's book. I don't think the release of H's book will overshadow the Queen's platinum celebration. Thinking people have the measure of H's character and insight into the disregard he has for his family. There will be a buzz after it is released, followed by proof of inaccuracies. The interview with Oprah and his subsequent behaviour opened people's eyes. The same observations can be made about H's wife. A book, no matter how controversial, will not steal the thunder from the pageantry and joy the citizens of the UK and indeed the world have in honouring Her Majesty. Just my opinion, of course. Are you of the same supposition? I thoroughly enjoy your channel and listening to your interesting thoughts. Thank you, Lady C, a Canadian fan. Joyce Liegman, when did you jump out of my brain because you jumped into it? <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Harry and Meghan have grandstanded once too often and they or at the moment you will notice being swamped and the action hasn't even started yet there is nothing that they can come up with that's going to be so big no matter all their deviousness manipulations calculations or prevarications none of it is going to work we're used to it. Wolfie, Wolfie, Wolfie. They cried wolf once too often. We see through them. Yes, if they come up with oh, pictures of Lilibet. Oh, oh, Mickey Lilibet, yes. Can you imagine if they show pictures of Lilibet just as they're trying to steal the Queen's thunder. Everyone's going, to, oh, God, here we go again. Yes, the newspapers will run the story, but it will be a 20-minute wonder. Nothing is going to swamp the Queen's platinum jubilee. The only thing that might come close to is if 
Megan decides that she's going to do what Simon the Sorcerer did and fly off a building to prove to the world that she can fly. That crash might cause a 20 minute uh, diversion, well, actually half an hour. But that's not gonna happen. And even if it did, it wouldn't last today. Yawnsville has set in with the antics of that couple. We see through them and the problem with that is they need to come up with new tactics and a new game. And I am reliably informed that this is what they're trying to do. Well, since they've scraped the bottom of the barrel and they smeared themselves in the muck and they tried to tell us that it's been put on by everybody else and it wasn't their fault. Well, they'll have to come up with a new act and it will be more acceptable. And that is desirable. And that is what everybody has hoped all along would happen. Christian Richards says, Lady C, what do you think of Adam Flebbing and his sarky comments about William's ornaments? Are there no manners and courtesy these days? The BBC should be boycotted. My opinion. Uh, well, I haven't looked at the BBC for ages. Quite frankly, they are Yawnsville as well, you know. They've tried woke and they've certainly made me feel that my interest in them is broke. Let's put it that way. They're also facing a big problem, potentially, because Charles Spencer, Diana's brother, Lord Spencer, is evidently considering launching a private prosecution against the BBC, against Martin Bashir and Tony Hall, who colluded with the suppression of crimes. The crime of blackmail, the crime of perjury, and the crime of perverting the course of justice, not to mention the serious civil offence of defamation. They defamed Richard A. Lord, who was Prince Charles's private secretary. They defamed Patrick Jefferson, who was Diana's private secretary. They defamed Tiggy Legberg in the most appalling way. They helped to drive Diana to a state of paranoia that she would not have been at naturally. She was literally paranoid. That is not funny. Paranoia is a mental illness. You don't drive someone into a mental illness. It is a total disgrace. And the police? have not bothered to investigate because they don't want being quite woke. They don't want to actually bother with another woke organization because it's the courtesy of one shark allowing another to go in to eat all the sea lions. Disgraceful, absolutely disgraceful. Let us see what happens, because at the moment, the Metropolitan Police in London are also being asked questions about the fact that they are constantly focusing on right-wing extremists and forgetting about 
the religious fundamentalist extremists and woke extremists who are not only killing politicians and killing people, but also grinding the country to a halt. You see the dilemma. The police are no longer impartial. They are very woke by and large. Now, I know some police officers who are wonderful and sterling and true and blue, but the average ethos, shall we say, in the force is if it's royal, if it's aristocratic, if it's privileged, if it's establishment, and establishment counts any Johnny come lately and hurry come up who's made himself a million or two million pounds. They will go out of their way to nail you to the cross. But if you are flotsam and jetsam, and if you are people who have nothing to contribute to society but want to take from society, oh, they're right there protecting them. Very sad. Bessie T says, Hi, Lady C. I saw your Domino's commercial and your performance was great. You looked lovely. Thank you very much. I tell you, hair and makeup, fantastic. I looked great, much better than I do normally. I wanted to ask a two-part question and ask for your opinion on why the media is so out to destroy the royal family. That is Prince Andrew, while at the same time promoting me gain, and Virginia the big bad wolf. I have noticed mainstream media, instead of declaring Prince Andrew's innocence, the papers are making it sound like the investigation was dropped because he is a prince. There was no mention at all of Virginia's lies or how her stories don't add up or of his innocence. Yet everything about Megan and Virginia is quietly swept under the carpet. There is a big push for these two awful witches. Can I get your thoughts? Thank you. Well, it's a very interesting question that you have brought up. First of all, Prince Andrew's innocence has not been established. It has been declared. So until it is established, people are open to disbelieve his disclaimers. But yes, you are absolutely right. The media, by and large, are playing to the gallery and they think what plays best is to support the victim even when the victim is not a victim even when it is obvious that the victim has been as much a perpetrator as other people who are in prison or in other scenarios where the victim is a perpetrator being disloyal to the institution which embraced her, the nation which embraced her, and the family which embraced her. Where Meghan is concerned, the British media have been more measured recently, but the BBC, ITV, some of the more awoke press still act as if Meghan is a goddess and that everything she said was true and fair, notwithstanding the fact that there are countless people who have claimed to the contrary that she is actually fabricating even her, I mean, for instance, the race card, you know, we have very reputable, credible, of the multiracial or mixed race community, who have made it absolutely clear that 
They think that Megan is a mischief maker of the highest order and has played the race card, not only mischievously and irresponsibly, but falsely. But they ignore that because ITV is headed by a woman who is so left that if she saw Karl Marx cross the road, she tried to run him over because he's too right wing. As for the BBC, I mean, Karl Marx, he was too moderate. You see the problem? We have in this country very powerful organizations, media organizations, that are anything but impartial and they're too dumb to understand that if they achieve their objectives, they're the first people going to be suffering and they will be in the gulag. But these idiots have never read history. They know nothing about history. All they know about is the narcissistic reflection of how wonderful they all are and the approbation of their cohorts and oh am i not wonderful oh yes you're wonderful oh, 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 oh wonderful wonderful one without understanding the consequences of their actions they pretend for instance that the world is worse off than it's ever been notwithstanding the fact that more people are better off and freer with a higher standard of living than ever has existed in the whole history of humanity. How does that reconcile with their, the line they're pushing that the world is in a terrible state and society is awful, society is better than it's ever been. Their technique is to destroy so that they and their cohorts will be in positions of greater power and greater influence and in the meantime they are influencing the narrative irresponsibly and destructively they are negative but in a free society we should allow negative people to have their say but we should recognize what they are happy girl says Lady C, you look stunning in your royal blue paired with your beautiful long blonde hair. Ooh, thank you. I would love to hear your opinion on something that happened to me. A long time female British friend of mine who lives in the USA thought that it was high time for me to wear my hair shorter because of my age, which is 61. She said this when I was 58 and I found it to be offensive. Has anyone ever mentioned to you that it wasn't appropriate to wear your hair long at your age? If so, what was your reaction, please? <laughs> well, no. I've had one friend who said to me quite rightly that my hair was too long and that it needed to be trimmed and trimmed it. Oh, this was some years ago because I don't actually spend much time on my personal appearance. I've got to tell you, I'm too busy, you know. Uh, I really am. I practically never go to the hairdresser. I dye my hair myself. Uh, I have to get it trimmed occasionally. If a friend will do it, great. Otherwise, I have to go and get it done. But that's the full extent of the maintenance. When I was 40, I am with the thing that after a certain age, a woman should cut her hair. And I cut my hair to the shoulders. And I quickly realized that it should be a little bit longer. Aside from anything else, when I'm wearing a tiara, it's much better for your hair to be long. The problems that some of us have, eh? <laughs> he says, I'm sending myself up. But anyway, uh, 
my hair suits me long because I'm relatively slender and because I am an older version of myself, of my young self. It's not so anomalous because long hair suits certain people and it suits me. And I've seen other people with long hair. I mean, Susie Barantes, the Duchess of York's mother, she always had long hair. She's just one that springs to mind. You know, long hair suits a certain type of person. And the whole business of age, it doesn't really matter. If you look better with long hair than short hair, wear it long. Jerry Hall lost 80% of her attractiveness when she cut her hair shorter. Long hair suits her as well. It doesn't only suit her body, it suits her face. I think she should grow it back. She's much better looking with it long. How long this will last, I don't know. Because, of course, one of these days I'm going to wake up and I'm going to look and I'm going to see that really my hair should be cut because it no longer suits me. But until I reach that stage, I'm keeping it long. And the truth is, most people would say that I have a reasonable objectivity where I am concerned, people who know me well. So believe me, I'm my harshest critic in many ways. And I look out for the day that it's not going to suit me. Fingers crossed, it won't come on till I'm 114. I hope that answers the question. But insofar as it applies to you or anybody else, if it doesn't suit you, cut it. And also, if you're in doubt, cut it. And if you don't like it, you can do what I did, grow it back. I just say that for what it's worth. Michelle says, Richard, the man, and this is very naughty and funny. Richard, the man who got your face tattooed on his leg says, if you ever meet him in Tesco's, he will pull down his pants and show you straight away. Let's hope you don't go too often to Tesco. <laughs> I go very often to Tesco, at least once a week. And I do hope that Richard will not show me the tattoo. I really hope that he won't. <laughs> But very witty of you to have said this. I appreciate your humour and let's have a good laugh about it. And on that note, I'll say thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been of some interest to you. If it has been, please like, share, subscribe, press the notification bell. And remember, keep the questions and comments coming in. This isn't possible without your input. God bless and goodbye.